In this video, I'm going to show you a technique to get better and more thoughtful answers out of ChatGPT that also works to get better and more thoughtful answers out of your students. We're going to ask ChatGPT to answer this math problem. It's a fairly simple problem that relies on knowledge of order of operations. If we type it into Google, we get the correct answer immediately. I'm specifically asking it not to provide an explanation. It gives us an incorrect answer. I've asked this question the same way multiple times, and while it doesn't always give this answer, the answer is usually incorrect. Now let's go back and edit the prompt. I'm editing the prompt because I want ChatGPT to approach the question fresh. Now I'm asking for it to answer the same question with an explanation. This time it went through the problem step by step and came up with the correct answer. This prompt consistently gets a correct response. Here's where it gets really interesting. I go back and edit the prompt to have it first give me the answer without an explanation and then explain its solution. It starts by giving a wrong answer and then while explaining the process, it realizes its error and corrects itself. I'm sure you've had interactions like this with students where an off the cuff response will be incorrect, but if they go through the steps, they will figure out the correct answer by themselves. So how does this information help us get better output from ChatGPT and better answers from your students? First, let's talk about why this is happening. There is a high demand on ChatGPT's servers, and it's designed to minimize the use of computational time for each response. When I asked it to answer without an explanation, it might have tapped into a more direct or potentially simplified pathway of its training. When I asked for an explanation, it delved deeper into its training, accessing more methodical and systematic data. People do this too. If we don't specify how a task should be done, it may be done in a way that preserves mental resources. Sometimes that's good, but if the cognitive shortcuts aren't working reliably, it makes sense to try a different approach. Let's talk again how this informs our use of ChatGPT. First, it may be worth asking ChatGPT for an explanation because that may prompt it to provide a more accurate response. Second, ChatGPT caps how many resources it uses to answer a prompt. If you give it a list of questions, it is more likely to use simpler algorithms to answer them than if you give it one question at a time. I'll leave you with the prompts I used in the video description so you can try them out yourself. Tell me in the comments about any interesting interactions you've had with ChatGPT and what you make of them. To keep learning about ChatGPT in education, check out the next video and I'll see you soon.